Oh, hey. Cool. Just in time. All right. We got. Is this gonna work? Oh, okay. I'll figure that out later. Uh, so yeah, um, this talk is called Storm Clouds Ahead, Why the Tornado Cache Developers Need Your Support. I'm um, Amin Soleimani, summoner of Moloch Dao. Thank you for joining us. Now, could I get a show of hands? Who here has heard of Tornado Cache? Everyone. <clears throat> Keep your hands up if you've also aware of the legal actions facing Alexei and Roman. And keep your hands up if you believe that open source developers should be held criminally liable for the crimes of foreign terrorists. There are some rooms in which there would still be a lot of hands up. I'm glad this is not one of them. So the tornado cache story. Uh, it was a privacy protocol used to generate fresh wallets because ETH nerds were actually jealous of Zcash and their private money infrastructure. And we wanted to avoid revealing our balances and transaction history with every single payment. Moloch Dow funded the initial development in 2019. It was an, of, of an open source privacy protocol to protect the security of Ethereum users. And it was the second ZK SNARKs deployment in human history after Zcash. There was a thousand person plus trusted setup ceremony and not many people know this, but the Tornado Cache team was actually rejected in the final round. There was two teams uh, by, the, by Moloch Dow to get the initial grant to build it. And they were so mad that they built the entire thing in three weeks anyway. And then Moloch Dow was able to reward them with a retroactive grant and paid for the rest of the open source development in terms of audits and, and stuff. And we used it for our personal privacy. Uh, I used it for payroll. And Vitalik, always the hero, used it to donate money to support Ukraine. Everything was going fine until uh, North Korea allegedly hacked Axie Infinity, a video game, for $600 million. Why a video game had $600 million, I don't know. Subject for a different talk. But <clears throat> this was not good uh, because after they hacked Axie Infinity for $600 million, those hackers started depositing hundreds of millions of those hack proceeds into Tornado Cash. And on August 8th, 2022, OFAC sanctioned the Tornado Cash contracts. And you can see that in their official statement, which is still there on the Treasury website, they say that $7 billion was laundered. They have no interest in uh, uh, differentiating between legitimate and illegitimate uh, uses of the protocol. So the legal action against Alexi. Two days after the sanctions, on August 10th, 2022, Alexi was arrested in the Netherlands. He was held without bail for nine months, and he was finally released on bail in April of 2023. He's been charged with laundering over 500,000 ether which, according to the authorities, he should have suspected was of criminal origin. Alexei has denied these charges. His trial starts in less than one month on March 26th. I plan to be there. The outcome of his trial will have an impact on Roman's trial as well. And we're grateful for the support of the Amsterdam uh, privacy community who came out to rally for Alexei and you can see the signs say, open source is not a crime, privacy is not a crime. And so then we have the legal action against Roman. So one year after Alexei's arrest, on August 23rd, 2023, Roman Storm was arrested at his home at gunpoint in front of his three-year-old daughter. And the FBI director, Christopher A. Ray, in his official Department of Justice uh, post on that day said, Today's announcement should remind criminal organizations everywhere in the world that they are neither untraceable nor anonymous. You can't hide from us behind a keyboard, whether you're a hacker or a facilitator. The awkward part of this is that Roman was not hiding. He was cooperating with the investigation when he was arrested. And beyond that, all of the code for this project was publicly available on GitHub, and the updates were all posted to Twitter. So if the government 
didn't like it, why didn't they send a pull request? Roman Storm is charged with one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering, one count of conspiracy to violate US sanctions, and conspiracy to operate an unlicensed money transmitting business. He could face a total of up to 25 years in prison. He was released on bail and pled not guilty, and his trial starts September 23rd in New York City. I plan to be there as well. Uh, I do have a video that Roman prepared for his legal defense fundraiser. We'll see if this doesn't look like it's carrying over, but uh, mirror displays. Uh -oh. oh, shit. Is the sound going to work? Can we get the sound on this? <laughs> it's just Roman's face. Uh, all right, I'm going to come back to this maybe at the end uh, since we're having technical difficulties anyway. Oh, God. <clears throat> um, so w Roman basically explains that uh, his case is going to impact all of us and that he was cooperating with the investigation when he was arrested at gunpoint uh, at his house at 6 a.m. in front of his three-year-old daughter and that uh, he needs all of our help as much as we can afford to, to help out. And so some friends and I helped set up Justice Dow to support the Legal Defense Fundraiser. Moloch Dow uh, donated its remaining funds. Gnosis donated as well. And last month, we kicked off a fundraiser on Juicebox, which successfully raised over $1 million from over 750 transactions. We are still short of our goal of $1.5 million. And so if you are inclined and have the means, please donate. There's a link there. And please follow Free Alexi Roman on the Twitter. <coughs> I'd like to give some thanks to people who've supported so far. Uh, first off, Edward Snowden, who amplified the fundraiser, which was a big help. And uh, I agree that privacy is not a crime. And I'd also like to thank some of the major donors. We've got Matter Labs. Uh, thank you, Matter Labs. Thank you, NounsDAO, JessPow.eth, Vitalik.eth, Noun12.eth, Koppelman.eth, BGDLabs.eth, and over 750 others who donated what they could. Oh, okay, cool. I have an aux cable now. Well, which side is this? Come back to this in a sec. So, uh, I'd like to talk about why the Tornado Cash devs deserve support. And the three main points I'll go over are the Tornado Cash compliance tool, that the devs couldn't have stopped anything and that this legal action represents a disproportionate misapplication of the law. So the Tornado Cash developers went out of their way to build a compliance tool. This tool allowed users to generate a proof of which deposit belongs to them. And this allows users to dox themselves as needed to financial authorities if mandated by regulators. There was a Federal Reserve report on Tornado Cash published at the St. Louis Fed, and it explored the trade-off between regulations and privacy. It was the best paper on Tornado Cash I'd read so far, and it uh, explained or suggested that to regulate effectively, that they believe that users should have to provide receipts for which deposit belonged to them to a financial intermediary managed by a regulator. It basically mandated the use of the Tornado Cash compliance tool that they built. And they conclude in that report, crypto asset mixers such as Tornado Cash may become an integral part of public blockchain infrastructure. They understood the value of privacy and the dangers of financial data honeypots. And I have one personal nitpick to add here, and that's that uh, it's not a mixer. Uh, if it was a mixer, you wouldn't be able to prove that what your deposit belonged to you specifically. And if OFAC had a problem with the compliance tool that the St. Louis Federal Reserve recommended using, 
they could have just talked to the team about it. So the next point is that the devs couldn't have stopped anything. In the same Department of Justice post on the day of Roman's arrest, Assistant Attorney General, Ma uh, Assistant Attorney General Matthew G. Olson said, as stated in the indictment, the defendant's cryptocurrency service facilitated more than one billion in illicit transactions, and they knowingly allowed a globally sanctioned cybercrime group to launder hundreds of millions of dollars on behalf of the North Korean regime. In addition, Acting Assist Assistant Attorney General Nicole M. Argentieri said, as alleged, the defendants operated Tornado Cash as a safe haven for criminal actors to obfuscate the trail of funds tied to their criminal activities. This is a chart of the ETH in Tornado Cash. You can see the top of the second spike is when the sanctions happened, and in the month after the sanctions, the amount of ETH in Tornado went from about 250,000 to about 100,000. But in the months, in the years and since then, <laughs> the amount of ETH is up about 40% to back about 130, 40,000. And this is despite US sanctions, the devs being arrested, the DAO being hacked by a malicious governance proposal, and the UI being compromised by the DAO hacker. The smart contract is immutable, and what that means is that it will continue to operate as programmed until the heat death of the universe or the end of the Ethereum blockchain, whichever one comes first. Not even the tornado torn governance system could shut it down. Uh, also, it was a non-custodial system. Uh, there was no admin key to freeze deposits. If there was, that would have been a massive security vulnerability for all of the users, including the legitimate ones, because if it was hacked, then all of the legitimate users could also have their money drained. And the smart contract can be accessed from any UI or command line interface. There, the UI that the Tornado Cache devs were managing uh, actually did go ahead and block addresses using the Chainalysis Sanctions API, but if other people can access it through other UIs, there's nothing they can really do to stop people from accessing it. And so the devs are not the criminals that you are looking for. Further, uh, the legal action against them represents a disproportionate misapplication of the law. When HSBC laundered $900 million for the cartels, no one was criminally charged. But when the Tornado Cash devs wrote some open source code, they were crucified. So when the HSBC cartel money laundering happened, OFAC uh, pursued a civil enforcement, and the Department of Justice went ahead with a deferred prosecution agreement, which resulted only in fines, no criminal charges. With Tornado Cash, OFAC went straight for sanctions, and the Department of Justice went straight for criminal indictment. And this is despite the FinCEN guidance that non-custodial privacy tools are not money services business. Notably, FinCEN did not uh, take parallel uh, enforcement action as they have in the past. The Tornado Cash developers are fighting for all of us. The outcomes of these trials will have far-reaching consequences for ETH developers and for users, especially those working on privacy tools. If they lose, they face imprisonment and government overreach. Holding the protocol developers accountable for the crimes of their users will reach only further. I'd like to thank NounsDAO in particular and Brennan.eth, who submitted a manifesto along with his yes vote to send the NounsDAO proposal. I'm going to read part of this manifesto. We find ourselves at a pivotal juncture in history where our actions and decisions will significantly influence the landscape of commerce and freedom. Across our global village, voices rise in unison, advocating for the liberty to engage in commerce, for the autonomy to innovate without undue hindrance, and for the sovereignty to partake in the vast tapestry of global trade. These are not mere theoretical concepts. They are the bedrock upon which we construct our shared economic future. Let us be clear. Our resistance is not <clears throat> born out of a disregard 
for societal governance. Uh, governance or societal welfare. Instead, it is rooted in the belief that true economic prosperity flourishes in an environment of freedom and open competition. Our struggle is not against regulation per se, but against the overreach that stifles innovation, creativity, and equitable access to markets. Thus, let us advance with determination, not as adversaries of regulation, but as advocates for balanced and reasonable frameworks that nurture innovation and equitable commerce. Let our resistance be a testament to our commitment to economic freedom, a beacon for open trade, and a clarion call for the empowerment of all participants in the global market. Uh, thank you, Brendan.eth. Uh, we turn the manifesto into NFTs, and you can purchase them and support our cause. Please follow the, the Twitter there. <clears throat> I'd like to also mention Privacy Pools, which is advancing the compliance tools that Tornado Cash team pioneered. With Privacy Pools, users can publicly dissociate from illicit funds. And this aligns with the regulatory objectives of isolating the illicit funds while still providing privacy for legitimate users. There's a testnet that's live on Gorley at privacypools.com. You can check it out. And it works like this. Uh, you can see the red boxes at the bottom. Those are the deposits that you don't want to associate with. And so when you withdraw from a privacy pool, you can provide a proof that says, hey, I'm not going to tell you which specific deposits I am, but I can prove to you that I'm not the illicit money or the you know, North Korean hackers or the DeFi hackers that have deposited. We shipped a working demo last ETH Denver. We published a paper with Vitalik on privacy pools and compliance. We worked with Dr. Fabian Schar and his team from the University of Basel, the authors of the original Tornado Cash paper that was published in the St. Louis Fed. And we've been presenting the work at regulatory conferences to educate regulators about the new opportunities uh, that are unlocked by using zero knowledge proofs for compliance. Malik Dow gave the grants the chainway to build the Privacy Pools 2.0 system, which we will complete this week. And now that the R&D is complete, so is my involvement. And I am now advising Oxbow, a company doing compliance, monitoring, and whitelisting for privacy pools and more, which we'll discuss on the panel after this. I'd like to conclude by saying that putting the devs in chains for eternity and feeding their guts to the eagles won't prevent the zero-knowledge proof fire from spreading to humanity. The future we want depends on zero-knowledge proofs for privacy whether it's freedom from central bank digital currencies that are essentially massive surveillance operations, or if we just simply want to iterate and make better blockchain-based democratic institutions where voters cannot be coerced or bribed or put in danger by their votes being public. And in the story of Prometheus, he's actually rescued by Hercules. And so today, together, we can all be Hercules. Let's free our Promethean friends who dared to steal the fire of zero-knowledge proofs from the gods on our behalf. Thank you. <laughs>